good day, you guys. We're out here in the deep green forests of Canada, and we are driving Webster's four-door ER34 GTT. It is a factory RV25 turbo. It's got a lot of good Japanese parts on here, a lot of good personal touches, and we are going to take it for a drive. So, yeah, so even though Webster's only run only 333 wheel horsepower, totally great streetable number for an RV25. Uh, the car, when it came from Japan, already had, or maybe the previous owner did this, it was already in Canada. It's got a six puck unsprung clutch. So really light pedal feel, which for a daily is nice. So then your left leg doesn't get all cramped up and tired. It's, it's kind of cool, I like it. It's kind of the best of both worlds because in day-to-day -day scenarios, it's not tiring you out, but, and we'll figure this out when we start driving here, when you start driving fast, then you can actually shift rather quickly uh, and it, it'll totally give you good feedback back. It'll feed you right back exactly what you put in and you can have quick shifts where you can feel the engagement, get that nice hard crisp downshift. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Yep, <laughs> aggressive differential. Oh, she's quick. Yourself, though the R34 has long gears now I don't know if this aftermarket differential has changed the ratio of the rear end but long gears long gears this is a second gear third gear car <laughs> oh yeah as long as you keep it above four you've got crazy throttle response Crazy throttle response. RB25 trans feels good. There's something about it though that is not that confidence inspiring. And again, it could be due to mileage. It's a bit bouncy, but planted, planted. It's also got Nismo, aftermarket Nismo sway bars, which I don't know the exact specs on them, but I'd imagine they're a lot thicker than factory. Lots of rushing air from the turbo. Not a crazy big turbo. It is a, it's kind of what you would call a stealthy setup for this engine. You know, it, it bolts onto the factory manifold. When you pop the engine bay, you don't see anything too out of the ordinary. But there's not a crazy amount of turbo spool here. It's a little bit of an upgrade. Uh, it is a, I believe it's a ceramic ball bearing turbo. So still ceramic, but ball bearing. The spool is phenomenal, as you guys can hear. Hey, Webster, thanks for coming out, bro. No problem. And you're one of those guys that like, you have actually experienced multiple cars, so you have like a frame of reference. Yeah, yeah, you know, went through the Starlet, went through the Skyline phase, and then had a 32, and then this popped up, and then I had, I had to buy it, so it was a good deal, so I just copped it, went to the island, picked it up. Give us the rundown. I've never driven a stock RB20 DET 32, What's like? What's the biggest change just going from this to this? So the biggest change, obviously, is um, it's RB20. Uh, it's two liter turbo. It is extremely slow. <laughs> uh, don't that don't expect me. Yeah, it's, like, it's slow, but it likes to redline. Uh, if you decide, you know, put some boost controller on it, it'll hit 10 psi no problem. Uh, the 32 I had was own uh, was 50 shades, different colors, mix, mix match gray here and there. Mm -hmm. It had weird bondos on the door and the fenders. Uh, you know, did the usual fluid maintenance, oil change, brake flush, blah, 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 all that kind of thing. Then as a couple months go in, things starts failing, clutch pedals starts, you know, failing, slave gave out, master gave out, remain still starts leaking, then kind of dig into it, then it's like, oh, it was a drift car. Because yeah, I had the amount was, of bond work, it had drift car. I went to my buddy's place, that body shop. Said, it, it wasn't the mismatched body panels they no. gave it away at first? Yeah, it wasn't a giveaway. It was literally like, we took it to like, this whole back right here, yeah. the whole, uh, frame was all pushed upwards and this mm. whole car was into the right like 15 degrees so the car never ran never ran straight no matter how you set the toe to zero and everything the car goes sideways like Ooh. this all the time 
And at that point, I was like, okay, I had to give up this car. So I sold it to a guy locally in the island. He's taking care of it now. And it's like a whole new platform as well, because it's a 2.5, more, more power, more you know, displacement. And also it's a four door. So you can actually carry people and I don't have people complaining. I had no back seat because I had back seat now. So all you haters, I have back seat. <laughs> uh, so yeah, rundown, uh, stock RB25 Neo, uh, full bolt-ons, has a Tomei elbow, custom downpipe, pretty much straight three inch to a four and a half inch muffler, has a Hypergear ATR43 G3 SAT turbo with a 63 AR 74 mil external on the outside, internal gated. So it's pretty much good for like 500 to the crank. And uh, I'm pretty happy it came with the car. So uh, it has an Apexi tune right now, tuned by Racing Greed. Probably make about 12-ish PSI, only 330 wheels. Very reliable for daily. You know, I, I mean, I could go for more power, but for now, I just want to clean up the tune and make it drivable. It has a uh, also a Q45 MAF, so it breathes a little bit better oh, really? than the stock one, yep. And then a uh, 570cc injectors from GT, uh, from the 35 GTR, so a little bit more leg room here and there. But yeah, other than that, you know, it's got coilovers, it's got some Australian coilovers, DGR coils. Uh, they ride pretty stiff. They're like 12K front, 8K rear. Oh, wow. Don't yeah. know why yeah. they do that <laughs> weird number, but they, Australian things, they like to do it. Yeah. Uh, and then exterior has NTO3s, 18, nine and a half plus 27 all around. Uh, 235, 40, 18 tires. Just a little bit stretched, but it's good. Mm -hmm. Still got stock brakes, but has uh, StopTech uh, 300ZX pads. Got some project, project kicks, slugs, uh, you know, fancy things and then the only thing that I like the car the most is probably the steering wheel. Really? It's a custom Alcantara leather. It was actually from my buddy Anson that had it from mm -hmm. from his car that uh, he just took it out because he has a carbon one now so this one was done he sent it to Thailand and sent it back and he, he swapped it out so I just bought it off him and it's really nice. I, I like this. this touch. It's like the light blue stitching how it carries from the OEM uh, like side grips here onto the bottom and the top. Mm -hmm. That's rad. A lot of people are scared of getting into an R34 sedan or an R34 in general because, yeah, they're big cars. They weigh 3,100 pounds. They're, they're not light. They're not a lightweight car. Um, but the feel is absolutely there. It all goes out the window when you start to drive it. really comes on after 4,500. Ah, oh, Neos are so torquey. Oh, a little bit of blow off there. It's a little bit bouncy, but super planted. This car rotates phenomenal. I will chalk that up a lot to the differential, to be honest. The steering in the R34s, ah, it's just so nice. Super sharp. It's like, I like a car that I'm gonna walk up to and has that aggressive sports car looking feel. But the beauty with the R34 and why I think it did so well, not only initially, but now in the aftermarket, is because there's so many options. You can get a four door, you can either do a drift build, you can do a stance build and have a lot more of that style. People can take a lot of time looking around the car, seeing what parts you have. And then you've got the two door GTTs, which can, be used as a track car, yes, if you do the right setups for grip and whatnot, but it can also be used as a drift car. Ooh, what is this? Dodge Dart? Oh yeah, there we go, 440. Oh, what is this too? Plymouth? I know nothing about that car. Oh, and a first gen Mustang. Oh my God, we're, <laughs> we are not in the right spot here. <laughs> there is a clash of generations happening. And then, of course, there's the GTR, which is the ultimate, hey, you want to hit the track, you want to have a car that, yes, will drop jaws at most car meets, but also has incredible performance right out of the box. That's exactly what you're going to get from the GTR. There's so much to choose from here, and that's why the Skyline community is so large. Wow, huge kick up top. 
I think this has a lot to do with the tune that Racing Green's done here. And of course, the later RB25s, uh, and specifically the Neos, have a solenoid that controls the variable cam timing. And for some reason, with this turbo matched with the tune, you really feel it kick. You guys, I'm telling you, uh, I hate to admit this, but the premium for the two-door over the four-door might not be worth it. You're in here, you forget about it. I've already forgotten. It's gone. I'm looking at the dash. I'm, I'm hearing the sounds. I'm hearing the 25 sounds. It's all gone out the door. And, and you can share the enjoyment. When you get into the back roads, all of that just goes out the window and you completely forget what the heck you have behind you, right? You want to be in a position where you roll up after you've just done a crazy stint down the back road, sweating and just in that adrenaline pumping focus mode. And then some of like one of your rear passengers makes a little bit of a comment and it, it should startle you. It should startle you. You should forget that you have passengers in the back. But yeah, that's pretty much the rundown. Nothing fancy, all original paint minus the front lip bumper and side skirt and the wing. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's about it. It's very simple. It's kind of just had like a lip kit on it. There's no body kit or whatever it is. It's nice and subtle. It's a little bit low, good for daily driving. So, so it has a Blitz Lights front mount yeah. uh, intercooler. And then that LED is actually my DRL. Uh, the signals are Nismo. The side indicators are also Nismo. Mm. The lower transverse links are Nismo. And the best part was that the guy didn't tell me, but the front and sway bar, front and rear sway bars are also Nismo as well, which are oh, big, yeah. big money. So I didn't know that. So I'm like, that's a big bonus for me. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got Project, Project Mew brake lines, uh, some sort of diff at the back. It's very, uh, uh, how do you say, active. Like it, it wants to slide. It like, feels like a one way, a 1.5. Mm -hmm. I can't verify because I had never opened it. Well, what it is is like, so obviously when I first got the car, it, it ran, but it wasn't perfect. Um, the previous owner may have street tuned the car. So it, I mean, there's nothing against street tuning or anything. It's just, it's a bit weird when I got the car, like it would misfire and you know, it burns a lot of fuel. Didn't know what was wrong with it. Then finally brought it to a shop and the shop said like, oh, this tune is like, like a typical tune where a guy doesn't, that has not enough experience and just thinks setting everything at the max is making power. Technically it is true, but that's like a really old thinking. So the guy at Racing Greed um, retuned the car and I changed a couple of fuel trims, you know, because it has an aftermarket turbo. It's not the stock one. So obviously the compressor and the housings are much different. They're a little bit bigger, so needs more flow. So in order to do that, I have to upgrade to injectors for it to make more power. Because mm -hmm. on a stock one, I think I was leaning out at like 6K because the turbo just wants more, but my injector was holding back of it. So I had to reschedule again, put the injectors in, put a boost controller, and then dyno the car safely Mm -hmm. not trying to kill the car or anything because I you know we compression tested it as well the motor is super healthy but again it's 195,000 kilometers very close to the 200k mark mm -hmm. uh, so I just like got to take it safe you know I'm not trying to aim for you know most people on the internet it's like oh you got to go 400 500 I was like well this is a daily not trying to push you know that number and risk blowing up the transmission or the motor I just like just like the tune it just comes on when I wanted it to and mm -hmm. it's it's decent on gas don't expect too great out of it yeah <laughs> yeah Anyways, you guys, thanks for watching uh, this quick video. We're gonna wrap it up here. Webster's done an awesome job with this car and I have a feeling he's gonna have it for a very long time to come. You guys in the States, yes, R34 is 98. They're coming up. They're coming up, okay? They're gonna be legal in a few years and it's gonna be exciting to see the, uh, you know, basically the entire world supply of R34s is going to, already has begun shifting from Japan over to North America. There have been plenty of R34s made, plenty to go around, you guys, and uh, so much to get done here. Hit me up on Instagram, at Roads and Traveled, if you haven't already. Subscribe as well if you want to see any of our future videos. We will see you very soon. You guys, we just finished designing a few new engine code jet tags. Actually, we, we redesigned uh, a few of them. So we've got RB26, we changed up. They're no longer like Superman colors. I don't know exactly the inventory number on the amount of the previous designs that we have left, 
But if you really like that design, I'd suggest getting them now. Um, and then we did the 7M, we've got the 2ZZ, uh, we've got RB25, uh, RB20, B16A. We redesigned our 4G63, now it's in this cool like kind of lime green. And then we've got the B6ZE, of course, MX5 jet tag, and the 7M for you, especially you uh, Mark III super guys. So, if you want engine code jet tags, and if you have any suggestions of future engine code jet tags you want us to design, hit us up in the comments below. Until then, the link is in the description. And uh, this has been Webster's Very Loud and Droney R34 GTT ER34 sedan. Enjoy. Thank you.